Hello everyone. In this talk, I am going to discuss the mechanism of diabetic dyslipidemia. We will try to make this concept as simple as possible. Now, just to give you a brief overview, what are the components of a diabetic dyslipidemia? So, diabetic dyslipidemia has four main components. You have increase triglycerides, you have increase VLDL and VLDL plays a very very important role in this as we will discuss in a few minutes. You have increase small dense LDL particles. Remember the overall LDL levels are not increased but the small dense LDL levels are increased. And the fourth is reduction of HDL. So these are the primary uh, issues that are seen in patients with diabetic dyslipidemia and all these things ultimately lead to increased cardiovascular risk in a diabetic patient. So first let's understand the what are triglycerides and what are the role of lipase in this entire process. Now, the VLDL and triglyceride are the two primary factors that play a role in the diabetic dyslipidemia process. Okay, so if we look at the role of triglycerides, first we need to understand what are triglycerides. So triglycerides or also known as triacylglycerol are formed from free fatty acid plus glycerol okay so triglycerides are basically storage form of free acid free fatty acids now free fatty acids in its own way are actually toxic so to make it less toxic in when you are storing it we tend to store it as triglycerides and this triglycerides are stored in adipose tissue okay so this is stored in mainly in the adipose tissue okay so all your fat tissues fat the adipose tissue contains mainly triglycerides which is the storage form of fatty acid now the you know uh, triglycerides can be further broken into free fatty acid into its individual components by something known as lipase so there are various enzymes known as lipase which break down the triglyceride into free fatty acid and glycerol okay so this is the primary thing you have to it's very important to understand this to understand the mechanism of uh, dyslipidemia in diabetes patients now what is also very important to understand is that lipase is inhibited this action is inhibited by the very important hormone which is known as insulin okay so insulin inhibits the action of lipase so basically insulin prevents the breakdown of triglyceride into its individual components again this is a very important thing and you have to keep this in mind okay so let's move ahead so basically here you have to understand is that insulin prevents the breakdown of triglycerides okay now let's look at what insulin resistance plays a role and what is the role of free fatty acid in this entire process okay so we un already understood that insulin prevents the action of the lipase specifically lipoprotein lipase right the lipase in action is lipoprotein lipase there are various types of lipases you can perhaps discuss this in another talk but lipoprotein lipase is the one which is uh, primarily uh, prevented from breaking down by uh, uh, pro prevented from its action by insulin okay so lipoprotein lipase as we can understand breaks down the triglyceride into free fatty acid and glycerol now what happens is you have insulin resistance okay so now you have insulin resistance IR right now because of insulin resistance the break effect of insulin on lipoprotein lipase is lost okay 
so the lipoprotein lipase becomes more active because of insulin resistance right so there is increased lipoprotein lipase activity and as we discuss lipoprotein lipase will break down triglyceride into free fatty acid plus glycerol right so primarily what happens here is that there is increased level because of the insulin resistance there is increased level of free fatty acid in the blood now this like i said is a very 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 important mechanism and this is something you need to understand to understand the mechanism of diabetic dyslipidemia so ultimately the problem here is increase of free fatty acid and this increase of free fatty acid uh, is is the prima donna or the main culprit in the entire process why this is important if because the increased free fatty acid creates a vicious cycle so increased free fatty acid increases the insulin resistance and insulin resistance as we saw will reduce the will increase the lipoprotein lipase activity which will further increase the free fatty acid because so this creates a vicious cycle so increased free fatty acid because of insulin resistance itself leads to increase of insulin resistance and this is again a major problem seen in a diabetic individual okay now the next you can say a culprit is the liver which you know it's not a culprit but it's it's a i would say a uh, unintended uh, you know accomplice of the entire process now the story so far what we understood is that there is increased level of free fatty acid now where does this free fatty acid ultimately go to so this free fatty acid is transported to the liver we know liver is the ultimate dump right so of all the metabolic stuff so ultimately all of these goes into the liver now again it once it goes into the so from basically from adipose tissue right so you have all these things stored in the adipose tissue the fat tissue from the adipose tissue the free fatty acid is released and it goes to the liver so all the fat is then transported to the liver now what happens in the liver in liver basically again liver has to store this free fatty acid now it's uh, you know posed with a problem so the only way in which you can store free fatty acid like i told you is triglyceride so liver increases the triglyceride production okay so in liver there is increased triglyceride being produced now there is so much triglyceride that is being produced that this again creates a problem where will you store all this triglyceride or what will you do with all this triglyceride so the increased triglyceride that is form two things happen one it is there is increased storage in the liver secondly it is packed into vldl particles and released into the blood stream okay so ultimately the increased triglyceride there is increased either storage and other thing is it is packaged into vldl and released into the blood stream now this increased storage as you can understand leads to non alcoholic fatty liver disease and this non alcoholic fatty liver disease in turn leads to insulin resistance this is central insulin resistance or hepatic insulin resistance which happens so ultimately if you see the entire cycle right again there is a vicious cycle so there is increase insulin resistance which increases free fatty acid which increases triglyceride in liver which increases the storage of triglyceride in liver which increases which produces non alcoholic fatty liver which in turn increases insulin resistance and this also leads to increase so this is the ultimate vicious cycle that happens in diabetic individuals okay so now let's come to the role of vldl and what happens further so so far again we saw that the increase triglyceride produced in the liver is packaged into the vldl and then it is released into the blood stream now ultimately we know what happens with vldl so vldl is converted to idl which in turn is converted to the ldl right now because vldl is very rich in this case with triglyceride ultimately there is more ldl which is rich in 
triglyceride so this is ldl rich in triglyceride instead of regular cholesterol okay so ultimately you tend to have more small and dense ldl the problem with this small and dense ldl is that this small and dense ldl tends to get deposited more in the vessels right which ultimately leads to atherosclerosis so this is the reason why you have small dense ldl in a diabetic individual and also a reason why you have increase of vldl okay now let's then look at uh, what happens further on so the last aspect of this process is the reduction of hdl okay so we know that hdl there is uh, because of cholesterol ester transfer protein the hdl tends to communicate with the other particles that is your ldl and vldl that is apob related particles right so the apob particles that is vldl and ldl okay now there is a communication between these using cholesterol ester transfer protein we know hdl is protective we know ldl vldl are atheros uh, you know they lead to atherosclerosis now what you have to understand here is that the uh, hdl and all these things here they are rich in the what what you know here is that they are rich in the triglyceride so they are triglyceride packed particles so what these particles do is that they send their triglyceride to the hdl and in turn they take the cholesterol from the hdl right so this is a problem again remember hdl was supposed to dump the cholesterol out of the system whereas now what happens cholesterol gets back into the system because it is taken up by the vldl and ldl and in turn triglyceride is then sent to hdl now this obviously leads to more cholesterol being transported by the ldl vldl but it also has an unintended consequence which happens now one problem which happens is now hdl will have more triglyceride now because there is more triglyceride this is attracted to the liver the liver contains a hepatic lipase right so liver takes up all these hdl particles through hepatic lipase and then it breaks down the hdl so it reduces the hdl level also a triglyceride rich hdl has reduced circulation time so ultimately all this leads to reduction of hdl level okay finally let's look at what happens to the ldl so we saw that ldl is more small and dense also what happens is so you have small and dense ldl also there are two more problems which happen one is there is increase oxidation of ldl so increase oxidation of ldl produces more unstable plaques which increase the risk of coronary artery disease or uh, acute event like a myocardial infarction or stroke the second is there is increase because of glucose level there is increase glycation of ldl now because of the glycation of ldl is increased one of the problem which happens is that this glycated ldl unfortunately is not easily recognized by the ldl receptors right so let's say the you can say the nature of the ldl is changed and because of that they are not recognized by ldl receptor it is important for ldl to be recognized by ldl receptor to be removed from the circulation and because of that the glycated ldl tends to have a increased circulatory time so this again leads to more deposition in the arteries leading to increased atherosclerosis great so let's summarize the entire process so to summarize there is increase insulin resistance which leads to increase lipoprotein lipase activity which breaks down the triglyceride into free fatty acid 
this increased free fatty acid goes to the liver where it is uh, deposited as triglyceride so liver produces more triglyceride the increased triglyceride is either deposited back into the liver leading to non-alcoholic fatty liver or it is packaged into VLDL the VLDL is converted to more small and dense LDL also VLDL and LDL communicate with the HDL to transfer the triglyceride to HDL and also to uh, take up cholesterol from HDL the HDL then goes back to the liver unfortunately because it has more triglyceride and it gets broken down and the HDL level reduces and what happens to the LDL it is more small and dense LDL also this LDL has uh, you know increased tendency for oxidation and increased tendency for glycation and because of all this there is increased atherosclerosis and formation of plaques and these plaques tend to be because they are more oxidized tend to be more unstable so this is what ultimately leads to increased cardiovascular risk i hope this was clear and i thank you for your patient listening